But I'm able to kind of read the situation in that snap of a finger that, you know, if, if oh, I didn't feel that out. Well, I didn't either. This doesn't look like my handwriting. I'm going to get your stuff and I'll be back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin Lopes Silvero, and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you into the conversations of top producing life insurance agents so that you can level up your business. For episode notes and resources, visit liapodcast.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. Also, make sure you subscribe to our text notifications for episode updates and agent resources. All you have to do is send the letters LIA to the number 82149. That's 82149 in the message with the letters L-I-A. Well, thanks for joining us for this special episode. For the first time, we are bringing in a guest speaker and host to the show, Jennifer Maxwell. Jennifer is a certified DISC human behavior consultant who works with businesses in both the U.S. and Canada to teach them how to understand their customer so that they can close the sale and be more profitable. In fact, when she was applying these principles to her own business, she had a 90% closing rate without any formal sales training. So we are so excited to have her join with us today as we discuss how we as agents can use DISC to quickly identify who our clients are and how to better communicate with them over the course of the sit. Jennifer conducted a great training with our team last year, and so we'll also be sharing some more stories from the field and how we've been able to apply this to our own business and seeing great results. So let's get started. First off, Jennifer, welcome to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Welcome. Thank Can we you. clap? Is yeah. that allowed? Yay. I don't. Uh, there we go. Yay! I love uh, being here. Thank you. Jennifer, will you kind of give us some background on who you are and how you got to doing this today. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's a long story, but it's a good one. Uh, and I'll make it all the fun <laughs> parts here. So I actually heard about disc personality profiles from this guy I was dating online and things were going really well for like the first three months. And then we had that first fight, you know, the one, I don't think I want to do this. Forget it. I'm not interested. And he said, honey, baby, I'm sorry. <sighs> I forgot to tell you, I'm, I, I'm not a jerk. I'm just a D. I have no idea what you're talking about. He said, please come over. I want to tell you all about it. I can't believe I didn't tell you this before. I was like, fine, okay. So I went over and I listened to what he had to say. And he proceeded to tell me all about the ways I viewed the world, what was important to me, um, how I wanted to be appreciated in the world. So all these things. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this guy gets me. He really gets me. I don't know. I think I love him and I have to marry him. And I did. So <laughs> here we are, 14 years later, and um, it's really just become a staple in a relationship and how we relate to each other. We use it um, with our children, and they understand the actual, you know, what does DISC stand for? They're able to understand how to navigate the world in a completely different way. And it's eliminated a lot of challenges. You know, there's, um, if he's feeling, if our kids are feeling like they're maybe getting bullied at school, for example. We pause and talk about that. Well, what personality do you think that is? And why do you think they're doing that? Well, mm. they may want this and that. Okay, great. And then there's a whole lot of relief around that. And they can move through space with a lot more confidence and understanding. And that's really what life is all about. So it's gone through everything, through our personal relationships and our business. Now, to the business point, you you took DISC into uh, your everyday work. And at that time, it, it wasn't doing DISC consulting. It was actually a different business and it had great benefits to your business. Can you speak to that? Yes. So because I was using it in a relationship, I thought I would bring it into the business to see, you know, would it work? And um, at the time, for 10 years, I was a, a wedding planner. And um, I actually, the, the market is quite saturated with a lot of wedding planners. And um, I still continually maintained a 90% closing rate. I knew, wow. right, if I could just get in front of these people, <laughs> that's that I could amazingly close them. high. Thank you. I know it's almost unheard of. It sounds like those are fake stats. I assure you, we <laughs> I have done the research. <laughs> so, you know, the funny thing was, I just knew that if I could get in front of them, I could read the clients and give them their solutions in the way they wanted to hear them and understand them. 
and doing so, they would feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. That level of trust was um, built and rapport, and they would often sign before we left the meeting. So incredibly she's, powerful. She's tool. listening off the five-year-old reasons, and she doesn't even know it. And then they made a movie about you called The Wedding Planner. <laughs> yeah, right? no, that, no. That was about you? Was that one about you? a little different. Jennifer no. Lopez, no. That's oh, a different, different Jen. Jen. Different, different Jen. Jen. <laughs> Jenny from the block, that's right. That's different us. block, right? Different block, <laughs> yes, different block. Different country. Also that, yes. <laughs> so, uh, so some of our um, listeners might be wondering, well, how does this, you know, she's been in wedding uh, planning, how does disc and wedding planning relate to me? Um, but insurance is actually pretty close to you and your family. Uh, yes, actually, my husband is an insurance broker, um, and so um, I, I hear a lot of conversations. He's one of the the best salespeople I know. And him and Roger, honestly, they've been friends for a long time, <laughs> and uh, the two of them are leading the, the, the pathway in terms of sales. So um, I learn a lot about sales um, from you know the walls within, so I hear those conversations. But the power of building rapport is really everything, building those trust um, connections and the only way you can build them is by understanding who you're speaking to and what matters to them so um, it's everywhere it's really really key to to getting to here's the thing it's not just landing sales and that's why we're all here to kind of do that but it's really just um, I'll say landing the sale with air quotes like if you want your kids to put on their socks and go to school it's really <laughs> buy-in right you're looking for that level of buy-in and how do you get it and not everybody gives you their buy-in the same way. So I want to dive into DISC um, and explain it a little bit more. Um, so what is DISC and why is DISC important to our agents? Okay, this is where it gets juicy. So DISC is not a new <laughs> concept. It's juicy. Bring us the juice. Yeah, it's, here's the juice. It's not new. Um, it, it goes back as far as Hippocrates. So he cited the taxonomy of the four humors, which is like the four bodily fluids. Then Galen came along and expanded that theory and then suggested that the fluids then are tempered. Then you've, you may have heard the words uh, choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic, yes. and yep. melancholy, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So to, then we're going to drill that down a little bit easier. And then William Marston came along and took it further and created something we now know as DISC. But this is not new. The, and so D, I, S, and C, they're really just four main archetypes. And we see them everywhere, like from Comedia dell'arte right up to current day sitcoms. When Kramer walks into the room, you know what you're getting and you wait for it. It's like an yeah. archetype. So it's like that um, in human life. Of course, we're talking about extremes here, uh, but there are great examples. Now, we're all a blend of all four, but knowing the archetype you're dealing with or, or having a relationship with will inform the way you speak with them and the way you relate with them. So that's why this matters. Because if we all just kind of walk through life um, without kind of taking in other information. we are just kind of heads bouncing off each other. So that's not really a powerful way to relate with each other. So the reason it matters is because when you are selling something, insurance, wedding planning, it doesn't matter what it is, you have to build that rapport. And that rapport is, is really whittled down to getting into the other person's world. What is it like for them? And having a sense of empathy and compassion from where they see the world from. And when you can do that, that builds the connection, and from there you can build trust and and open up the opportunity for people. Can I ask a question? Yes. What's an archetype? archetype. <laughs> I know I can't be the only person who didn't was just wondering. Yeah, that sounds like we should know what that is, but I don't know what that is. What is that? Like like four main characters of the world. So you might have a strong personality, you might have a funny personality, um, a very sweet and sensitive personality, and a very deep thinker personality. Basically, those are the four archetypes. So it just means um, a, a category that someone might kind of fall under. So okay. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Never heard of the term archetype before. It was interesting, too, that you said uh, you know, it's not just about sales, but it's getting your kids to put their socks on. <laughs> and there's a there's a level of work that I'm not so comfortable in. In that, like, you know, as a parent, you're like, well, you just do it because I told you so. But the empathy and the understanding, and there's there's some work that has to be done to connect. Yeah. A hundred percent. It really is just that level of buy-in through your life. Every time, you know, do you want to go through life, you know, telling people what to do all the time? You could. 
<laughs> but you, you may not get the results you're looking You'll for. You'll be alone. You need yes. a lot of micro agreements, <coughs> don't we? We need a lot of those micro agreements. The micro agreements, yes. The little yeses along the way. And when you get to be, you know, those, those other stages, right? There's like, I'm, I'm conscious that I'm not competent at this. And the whole point is you at, you at least want to get at some point, you know, consciously competent, but ideally unconsciously competent. We are moving through space and all these things naturally flow. But it comes actually from, I would say, some personal work first. You really have to mm. know yourself. Everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to learn about other people. But they have yeah. no concept about how they occur in the world. And that's a really key factor. Well, uh, let's break down these types and help these agents who are listening to maybe figure out at least at a high level some uh, some types that they might resonate with. I know you have a whole... Um, set of tools that you use to help people figure out who they are. And um, we actually have them with us here in front of us, all the results from our tests. Um, and she has a whole accurate. laboratory. <laughs> that she, she like there's a dunking chamber. But if, if you're there's using a, art, art types, you have a laboratory. You have to. You <laughs> have to. There's I'm like right. freezing yeah. with uh, nitroglycerin. No, what is it? Whatever it is. I'm not the professor you are. <laughs> we trust you. I just know... I was asleep for three days, and then I knew what I was. I just want to know if there's a maze somewhere, like in front of you, and like the four of us are running through the maze Dude, with a little tail. Oh that's God. what's happening. <laughs> that's what's happening right now. I'm asleep in a laboratory, I'm, and I'm, I'm dreaming this. It, or like I'm a top down it. camera of the podcast. <laughs> no, this Sorry, is terrible. Right. We did what we did. We did what we do. <laughs> and everybody does, and that's the funny thing. That is it right there. Right there. Everybody is doing what they do, and it's only when you kind of say, wait a second, could I do things differently? Would I get a different yeah. result? Do you actually start to come alive and, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's mm. really cool. So uh, uh, it's really simple, actually. This is why I love DISC. And here's the thing. There are a lot of great metrics out there. There's Myers-Briggs, there's Strength Finder, there's, uh, you know, a million things that you could find that would work for you. And all of them are really, really valuable. So don't Do you discount. use those? Um, my other favorite one is Strength Finder. Yes, okay. I that's do that's good to know. That. That's a really, that's a personal one. So if you want to mm. dive into more, like, who am I and how do I kind of tackle the world, um, that's a really, really brilliant one. But... The reason that DISC is powerful is not just, it's not just who, you, who I am, but um, it's how I occur with other people and how, who are they and how can I quickly identify them. And, you know, the running joke I always say is you could never say to a potential client, I would love to help you, but if you could just give me a copy of your Myers-Briggs, you know, assessment, <laughs> then I could really serve you. Like, it's never yeah. going to work, right? You have to have that ability to quickly help, help situate somebody, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so that you can fully serve them. So that is why DISC is powerful. It's incredibly simple. And it's really just two questions. So if you're driving or however you're listening, just think of, of it this way. Just imagine a circle. And in the top half will be your outgoing personality and personalities. And the bottom half are more reserved. So you can mm -hmm. place yourself right now, whether, <clears throat> excuse me, whether you feel you're more outgoing or reserved. And here's the thing. We're all a blend of all four. So different types of t different times throughout the day, you may be outgoing or reserved. So either is fine. There's no wrong answers and you, you can't get it wrong. So either answer is fine. So top half is outgoing, bottom half is reserved. And on the left side, you have uh, the task people. And on the right side, you have the people people. People me, people. The people people, right? So let me tell you the difference. He, so here's the thing. If you're a task person, you would probably go to bed at night thinking of all the things that you did. I, you're a list maker. You like to check them off. You probably start with make a list at the top just so you have something to scratch off. How many of you are nodding, right? <laughs> oh, my God, that's me. Check, check, check. Um, and so then when you get down halfway through, you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't get that thing done today. And then you might pull out your phone and make a note so that you don't forget the next day. So you are really focused on getting the tasks accomplished. This is what helps you feel successful in life. Yeah, tasks. tasks. I mean, just lists awesome. on lists. Just open up his book. <laughs> like, I, my, it's, it's really a book of lists that I have. I mean, flip the page, there's another one. Flip the page, there's another one. Another one. Another one. Because <laughs> lists keep you on track, and that's how you know the progress that you've made. So that's very, very common. 
On the other side, we have the people side. And the people people go to bed at night and you may run in your mind, oh my gosh, it was so fun today. I was on Facebook and I had this great chat with somebody on Zoom and oh, that joke was so funny. Oh, I should really pick up the phone and call my mother because it's been a while. And I miss all the people. It's Corona, whatever it is. So you're having thoughts about um, all the relational things that happen. If you're watching the news, you may be like, oh, skip all the finance. I just want to see the human interest story. Oh, look, don't turn that off. How did they get the cat out of the tree? I need to know. So that's an indicator. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a cat person. They're not even on the chart. Oh. <laughs> that's <right. laughs> Look what I did there. I stepped in and I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you're in trouble now. So essentially, that's how you decide. So while outgoing and or reserved is an important component, what really matters, where most of the conflict comes from, is whether someone is a task person or a people person, because you approach problems from a different perspective. A task person might say, you know what? We had to fire the people we had to fire because we just had to do what was right for the masses. And, you know, we lost some good people. That's how it goes. A people person might say, but wait a second. This person has an entire family they have to provide for. And now mm. we've got six people and they're all like, you know, going to have nothing. They have no food. What are we doing? Why don't we all take a little less and still work together? So those kind of conflicts are what have people not build rapport because you're not on the same wavelength. So that is really what DISC is. Yeah, so I know here we have quite a few different personality types, but also some similar. Um, <clears throat> I was just laughing there when you're talking about task-oriented because I was thinking of trying to get some of these guys using a um, project management tool. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I put it in Asana, why, like, just look at Asana. It's in there. <laughs> right. And they're like, I, I, I've been on the phone with like five people. Why do I need to look at this? <laughs> it's just like people versus task. Yeah. It's very totally. different. And what's really and also, interesting. Like, go ahead. Well, like even people, people, I, you can figure out who I am probably. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I start thinking about tasks and folders and then folders that go in folders that go into folders like and then tasks and those folders completely shuts me down mentally <laughs> like like where does all this stuff go and then i have to remember where it went <laughs> yeah it is uh it is over i'm gonna I'm start like, to cry okay, right now well the recording of episode 25 <laughs> oh yes went into ep 25 folder which is a podcast in the year 2020 in the lia folder right and like mm -hmm. it all makes sense. Damn. Of course it goes here. Yeah. As God intended. That's where it is. <laughs> and I'm trying to solve the world's problems. So and, and I'm <laughs> like, is it just just tell me if it's done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you haven't figured it out, uh Roger, high D. Uh I am high S. Uh let's let's see. High S C. Um and so, Jen, uh, will you kind of maybe talk through um, the words? I will. Uh, with each letter? Yes. So, you're right. There, there are w letters that correspond with each of the quadrants. So, if you're thinking, in, again, in the circle, top left would be outgoing and task-focused. And that is your D personality. So, I'm going to come... Okay. So, I'm going to come back to the words so that if you kind of land yourself on the, uh, the chart, then you'll know if this works for you. If you're outgoing and people-focused, that would be the I quadrant. If you're more reserved but people-focused still, that would be the S quadrant. And if you're reserved and task-focused, that is the C quadrant. So, the words that go with those would be this. So, these are the dominant. They're like... They're the really direct... So they're, they can be on a bad day, a little demanding. So if you know someone that's sort of like, just do that thing, they may be a D personality. They're also, mm. Mm, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> Mm. Um, our, listeners are, our listeners are like evaluating their own families right, right. now, the people uh -huh. they work with. Yeah. If you're listening, you got to try to identify yourself as she, as Jennifer's going through this. Yep. It's, it's going to be an interesting exercise for sure. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And again, you may fl slip in and out of these quadrants as well. So um, determined, and you're just a doer. You like to get things done. If you cannot sit on the couch without surfing and answering emails while your kids are watching a movie, you are probably a D because <laughs> you just want to get things done, right? Done is your favorite word. That's a D right there. 
So, you know, a great example of that would might be um, Kevin O'Leary. So he's on Shark's Tank. Uh, or Shark Tank. And so he's like, you know, how am I going to make money? I don't want the sob story. There's no crying in business. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's just, you're dead to me. <laughs> you're dead to me. Just like, make me money or we're not doing this thing. And um, Barbara's over there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and then going to the, the right side, the outgoing and people focused is the inspired type, the I type. So they're also influencing um, they're impressive and impressionable, they're interactive, and they're interesting, and they're interested. So that sort of, again, you'll see all those words correspond. They're eyes. So I would say the, the most common um, career type would be an entertainer. So if you think about our actors and people on TV, you know, you've got uh, Ellen, for example. She's out there, and she's doing, she loves to make people laugh. Comedians, that's a great example of somebody who's inspiring. Oprah, very inspiring. Um, so that's if you're if you're falling to that category, that's probably where you may fall in the inspired quadrant. If you're a little more reserved, however, but still people focused, that is the S quadrant, and that is the supportive type. So you are very like stable, steady, sensitive, status quo, and a little bit shy. You will, and yet you are self-sacrificing. So that is one of the key factors for people in the S quadrant is that they uh, serve people so fully that they sacrifice themselves. Um, you know, a great example of this is a friend of mine who said, my mom, here, it's her birthday, I want to just shout out to her. She is out there serving people. You know, last week she broke her foot and she didn't want to disappoint anyone. So she quietly served everyone at church and I was like, oh, classic S. I'm going to ruin my <laughs> foot for life, but please have a donut, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> So if that's you and you are uh, continually just serving, even though you haven't had any sleep, you haven't eaten yourself, you're getting a migraine, but you got to serve the people, you may very well be an S. So moving to the bottom and left quadrant is the reserved and task focused. And they are our cautious or calculating type. They're also really compliant. Um, uh, so uh, competent, conscientious, contemplative, and careful. So a great example of that might be uh, Captain Sully, for example. You know, uh, about 10 years ago, we had uh, Miracle on the Hudson, if you recall. Mm -hmm. You know, a flock mm -hmm. of uh, Canadian geese flew into the engines three minutes into the flight. He couldn't turn around. He had to land that thing in the Hudson. And you either, you know, you land it perfectly or you kick, you know, whoops, a little degree off, your wing falls off, you cartwheel and everybody dies. So really high stakes, right? <laughs> Those dang Canadians. Right? Oh, oh, Canadian I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't gonna, only, only from Listen, Canada can you say that's that, right, that We got a slight right. story in there somehow, right? Yep. The Canadian geese. Part of the story. So that's really key to knowing who you're dealing with. Oh, and I forgot to mention. So an S example might be Mr. Rogers. So like the oh, nicest yeah. person you know. If you, Oh my gosh, they're so nice. You're probably dealing with an S. So these four quadrants are key. If you see them coming and you see them coming a mile away, if you speak to them in their language, you can get that buy-in and you can relate and then build rapport. And really, you can get them to put their socks on or buy a million-dollar policy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> the uh, the C of uh, Soli. I mean, he, like, to think... And, and if you watch, whether it's the movie or any of his press conferences, he was like, well, of course course that's why i did that like why would there's no other there's no other way it's logical I mean, that, that's that what anyone logic. would do exactly it wasn't a miracle um, it's just yeah. you know hard work right you just put yeah. your mind to work people and very like calculated calculation uh, see yep so you probably say like accountants sometimes yes. or uh, it department actuaries it department yeah, yeah. that's good mm -hmm. graphic designers web designers mm -hmm. but so the power here is uh, how we work together, um, but more so for our agents in the field, how knowing their personality types and the personality types of their clients, um, how that can impact the business all the way from the door to the sale. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen, can you talk to, um, you, you kind of touch on this, the questions on how you can quickly figure out in a moment's interaction probably where that client sits in disc and then how to start figuring out how to engage with them. That, that's a really great point. You want to make sure that you're quickly identifying and there are a number of factors. Um, 
So basically, anyone who's outgoing will move quickly through space. Um, they're often kind of uh, louder, they have bigger gestures, so that's a key indicator. But don't be fooled, because some outgoing people, they, they hang back a bit because they're observing. So they want to see what you're going to do first. <laughs> so don't get, don't get uh, thrown off by that. Uh, if you're knocking on the door and someone opens it up like, what do you want? You're probably dealing with somebody <laughs> who's an outgoing person. That's your first clue, right? Um, if they're reserved, they may crack it open or they may look through the thing. Who's, you know, who's <laughs> knocking on my door? I'm not, I don't, he's got a clipboard. No, I'm not going to open the door. So, you know, there's all, or they crack it open and how can I help you? So that's probably an indicator that you're dealing with someone who's reserved. So um, you may consider someone is going to open their door and protect their property or they're going to cautiously open it and try not to offend anybody. So um, that's the first clue right there. Mm -hmm. Who are you dealing with? And then as you continue to talk to them, the way you figure out task-oriented versus people, the task-oriented, they're going to want, who are you? Why are you here? What is this for? How much is this? Blah, blah, blah. And then the people side, you can start to relate to more. Um, so if you start doing what, what we've talked about in several episodes of CORE, um, you're going to quickly figure out, oh, they want to relate. They want to tell me about their grandkids. I mean... Figuring figuring this stuff out, it, it Sometimes amazes me. <laughs> you get wrapped up in those, you know, hour long conversation about, you know, their cousin Eddie. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and so that's when you're on the people side. Yes, and that's a really key indicator. So you're right. Uh, if, if someone is a task person, they want they want the details. Just what's it going to cost me? How much is it? What's it going to give me? And you know, then you can get out. A people person will invite you in, they'll make you a cup of tea, and then they'll, they'll tell you, like, oh, that's my, like you said, that's my grandson, and that's, you know, you're going to hear all of it. So, you know, in that moment, you know, we talk about building trust, but there's actually an even uh, more, a clearer distinction. You're actually looking to build rapport, and if we understand rapport, it really means getting inside that person's world. And building rapport is done in one of two ways. Trust is built for a task person first. They want to know the product and service you're offering is going to provide what you say it's going to provide. If, the, if you can prove that, then they'll trust you and then they may tell you a little bit about their family or their grandkids, but they're not telling you anything until then. They they're kind of hold their cards close. On the opposite side, if, you've got, if you're dealing with the people, they will tell you first all about the, the people, the grandkids, the garden, you know, the, oh, I grew these crops, whatever. <laughs> Look at the tomato plant. Crops. So you're, <laughs> the crops. The tomato plant. Okay, maybe not crops. I grew but. an entire hectare of... <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to tell you about all of the things first. And depending on how you respond will indicate whether you're worthy of building a relationship with them. And if they feel you're nice enough, really, that's how, what it gets down to. This is a nice person then they will trust you. So the ultimate ladder you're looking for is rapport. So it's, you know, we say the word trust sort of as a blanket statement, but it yeah, really mm -hmm. is rapport. Does this, does this person get me? And if no, you I, get um, them, then they'll let you in a little bit more. I remember I was training an agent and a real, I would probably say, probably a C -A -C -S, Can I say that? Probably a CS. Yeah. And uh, during that, that training we had, uh, I could see like the energy level was down. I was like, I think one of the issues we're dealing with here is a lack of enthusiasm. So we need to work on that a little bit. And this poor guy, I mean, he went up and knocked on the next door. Clearly a D answered the door. And he's like, <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. It was so unnatural to him, unnatural to that person. And it was part, you know, it was all my fault because I didn't have a clear understanding <laughs> of of his personality and and how to help him engage a little bit. But yeah, those man, I've learned so much and and can, these conversations. Yeah, no, I want to dive into these stories. I mean, uh, Jen, you you've told us stories that your husband has experience of a D knocking on a D's door. Yeah. <laughs> of like with that yeah. experience, like you know, these are these are the interactions and and how you were how he was able to identify that and then proceed. Yes. Can you share that story? 
Okay, and there's a couple of them. So, um, and I want to hear yours as well because it's really going to be interesting to see how you how you manage it. And I think it really comes down to matching energy. And you get a D and a D together, it's like a head to head because D's recognize other D's, and it's like two bulls, and they're going to just come at each other, and whoever wins is the winner. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I think he was knocking on the door, and, and he opened the door, and it's like you know, I, he just cursed at him like in a full sentence, and he said. Wow! Like at this point, he had nothing to lose. He was he was oh, door knocking, right. right? And he was like, "I'm not going to get the sale anyway. I'm going to tell you how I feel." I said, "Wow, that was rude." Here's what's going to go on. I'm going to close this door and I'm going to open it back up because I could be a potential client. And you're going to say, "Hi, can I help you?" And I'm going <laughs> to say to you, "I'm selling you this thing." And you're going to say, "No, thank you." Okay, let's practice. <laughs> and he went out and he opened the door again. He said, "Hi, I'm." You know, I'm Simon Maxwell, and I'm here to sell you this thing. No, thank you. Okay, no problem. You see, that's how you have to be to people. You just have to be nice or something. And he slammed the door and walked away. <laughs> I'm sure he'll tell awesome. me I'm going to mandate the behavior of my clients. <laughs> right. Even if it costs me every sale, always. <laughs> right. Well, I think at that point, he knew it was just loss leaders. Yeah. Like, ah, forget it. I, mean, yeah. I, I, oh I think he'd gosh. knocked on too many doors that day, right? Yeah. <laughs> forget it. I'm not taking it anymore. <laughs> so, Have you yeah. all had any experiences where you... you are able to quickly identify, and maybe this was before DISC that you can now apply this knowledge and these words to. I mean, we talk about our clients sometimes don't have the ability to explain how they feel because they don't have the words and we're there to help them. I mean, this is a tool that we can use as agents to put things to words. You all have any experiences? I would say uh, for for me, I think there was a, a natural understanding because I do fall in that SI. Um, I won't say natural understanding, but you know, because you're in, you're in tune to people's needs as an S and, uh, there would be times what I was trying to say about me, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> you're very in tune, sir. So the three, <laughs> the three of us, he's avoiding the confrontation the right there. <laughs> Rogers, high D high I, oh, yeah, like right yeah. in the middle, yeah. right in the middle. Low and like we're we're in the S. I'm, I'm looking at the graphs. Circle. I'm like, why did I surround myself with all these people I don't in the think, S quadrant? Well, as oh, a D, I, I don't think D, you have you a choice. We as ask the, the D, you do. We ask exactly. the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> we ask the same. If, if you look at the back of, uh, of the, I results, say that uh, I say that D's are surrounded by the best people. <laughs> <laughs> if you, they don't, they're going to be by themselves. <laughs> if they're not, they're going to be by themselves. <laughs> but they're gonna they're gonna own it. And yeah, like I'm by myself because I want to be. That's right. <laughs> Hundred percent. Yeah. So I uh, I noticed that when I would sit with uh, strong personalities, I would I would say a strong personality that I would try to address what I needed to address, do the core, get through the education page of our presentation, and then work on more core because I've established myself as the expert. So that's what I noticed myself doing before I understand this fully, and it seemed to it seemed to work. In most cases, hey, it's crazy. Like b- before, you came to our conference, Jennifer, and and really helped open our eyes to this. I mean, I was a lot like Chris. I felt like I'm I'm also at an SI. Um, I'm I'm the same exact box as Austin, but he's more more task. I'm more people, which is fitting. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, understanding this and, and just like you said, like there's been especially at the door. Like this is a huge thing at the door for me, and I, and I, I think I've kind of figured it out. And and the door is seems to be really easy for me or other people it's kind of difficult but i'm able to kind of read the situation in that snap of a finger that you know if it oh i didn't feel that out well i didn't either this doesn't look like my handwriting i'm gonna get your stuff and i'll be back or if it's you know uh you know i'm, I'm getting down real gentle with the old lady and, and i'm calm and real slow and like i find myself like a swiss army knife at the door that i can do anything at a, at a quick moment to to Almost, I don't know if it's mirroring their personality or, or mirroring are, yeah. exactly what they need. Um, and, you know, like understanding this and for the listeners to, to, to actually do and take this and understand yourself, um, then you can understand how you can, um, you know, really gauge and in, in different personalities in the home, in the sit to understand what they need in the rapport building, what they need as you're mm-hmm. going through the, like what kind of things do they want to hear about themselves and in order to really just adapt and, and come to a, a conclusion. 
A hundred percent. You really nailed it on the head right there. Um, what's interesting is oftentimes people think I'm going to be a salesperson and I'm going to show up the same way and this is my pitch and take me or leave me. But yeah. what you've, it's just never going to work. So what you've done is when, when you adapt, it's really, uh, what I just like to say is just reading the situation. You would never talk to Mr. Rogers the same way you talk to Kevin O'Leary. And so, <laughs> oh, right? no, that would be totally rude. <laughs> right? So yeah. showing up at someone's door is the same way. You don't know what you're going to get. So you want to be pleasant, of course, and, and yeah. a little bit malleable. It's your moment to see how do they show up. And the biggest thing I've learned, and you said of mirroring, I would say also matching energy. Um, it's not, the, and I would always say elevate your energy because you want to ha- bring a lot of enthusiasm to whatever you're doing. But you don't want to be so enthusiastic that you are scaring people because <laughs> then right, they'll yeah, run away yeah. and lock the door. Oh, we, we've dealt with Hello. that too. <laughs> we've had yeah. to lower energy on some agents because right. it was just like blowing you out the water. Like You're not going to take a nap around that person. <laughs> no, not out of chance. So that's a key, a key thing, right? You don't just show up. I'm going to practice my presentation and only be this way because you'll just get the door slammed every time. So you have to match who you're, who you're dealing with and then meet them where they're at. That's always the key. And so so tell me, go a, a good a good cheat for our listeners, if they have not done the DISC personality profile, they've not done an assessment or, or even done any of the others, and they're like, well, I really need to understand who I am, and they're starting to go through that process, but they've they got to go to work today, right? <laughs> and we don't want to mess them up completely. Is mirroring a, a, a good way to start as kind of like an entry point, kind of wading into the waters? Uh, I mean, is that, is that a, would, you, would you recommend that? A hundred percent. That's always, uh, that's the, that's the least, that's the basic, the baseline, right? You want to be able to, to mirror and see where someone's at. And after a while you get really good at it. They'll cross their legs and you'll cross your legs. You won't even know what's happening, but you know, they're leaning in and you're leaning in. So those are just small indicators of where people are at. And if you are like them, there's this natural synergy that happens. Oh, this person's like me. They're probably trustworthy, or you know, whatever might happen. So yes, mirroring is a baseline. Do that. Not and, obviously, and, though. Don't be like crazy about it. You know, that's all. Yeah, I'm. I'm in front of them doing this, and they're doing it <laughs> yes, like don't it's do a, that. <laughs> so when they put up their dukes, like Chris says, yes, yeah. we yeah. put up our. Now people can see it. Like, Come on, yeah. bring right. it. Is there? Uh, I know this is an odd question, and it's uh, you know, um, it just popped in my head. Is there a personality that is generally? more successful or easy adapting to a sales position versus maybe not? Not saying they can't, but they may have more challenges to overcome. Work harder at it, yeah. Yes, I would say anyone in the outgoing quadrant. So either a D or I is a really great, either one or both is a really great blend for anyone in sales, but it's not an absolute requirement. So usually one of the outgoing quadrants um, is part of the success factor and then one in the reserved is also really helpful so you could be an is so that outgoing nature allows you to kind of muster the courage to knock on the door because it takes something that's not sugarcoat that you got to have a little bit of some guts to be able to say okay as a stranger i got a card i'm gonna knock on a door Um, and then your s is really service focused and you really do want to help people so that's a beautiful blend Mm -hmm. Um, if you are a, a DI, again, you've got that drive to kind of knock on the door and the Roger. I to also soften. Well, they're probably going to be top producers. What's that? Those, those guys are probably yeah, top producers, I would, I would guess. They're driven. Yeah. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. Name I, I want to recognize you that you're a top producer. Yeah. Oh, is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's also a DI? Right. Yeah, for sure. I, D-I. D-I, D-I-D. Well, the thing about the double dose of outgoing is that you can take a lot of hits and, and uh, you know, wipe the blood off your nose and you get back out there. And we have the Sometimes most- you just need to get a little in your mouth to get fired up. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Bring good. it. I have never said that in my life. <laughs> Well, my husband's you get punched the in the time. face and, you know, you're the inside of your mouth bleeding and you can taste it. You're like, okay, I'm ready. No, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> No wonder and, you and my husband are best friends. Like, you know, like that's what he says to me all the time. Babe, you just haven't gotten your nose bloody enough. That's what he tells yep. me. Here, here's so. the real question. Is it you punching yourself in the mirror? 
you get yourself ready? <laughs> no, that doesn't I can, work. I can definitely see that. That doesn't yeah. work. He's just a guy mad at himself because he's not organized enough to keep his materials in his trunk and he's just trying to sell on his personality. You're your own hype man. <laughs> so, or he's on the phone to make phone calls and he forgot where his list is. <laughs> you know, I can't find the document. Who am I talking to? That's right. Oh that is- Was this transferred? I don't even know her name. What's going on right now? I'll just knock on the door, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. The, the beauty of the DI blend is you have that drive, you rely, you know that you can count on your outgoing personality to, to manage it all. But, and there are buts to every side, right? Right. That because you're so confident and you can deliver on the fly, you can show up overconfident and underprepared. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that is a, a key factor to knowing that. So having, I've, I've been there. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> Many My times. name's Roger and I've been yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So having the, the outgoing and reserved blend is also really successful. So if you're feeling like, oh, I'm a little reserved, I don't know if this is for me, you can do this. So um, your approach is going to be really beneficial for people that have a softer tone, um, that need more information, and you just have to, you know, be, like like I used to tell myself, when because I, I my quadrant is a high ISC, Under pressure, my eye drops and my S goes up, so I get very service-focused. Suddenly, I become shy and a little reserved. Faced with a D, it was really intimidating. And I used to have to, like, have this conversation in my head. Put your big girl panties on. It's not not about you. (laughs) And just say, okay. And the thing I learned is that when you face a D head-on, you say, no, actually, this is the facts. They will be like, huh. Okay, I respect hey. that. Yeah, she sounds pretty confident. She yeah. must know what she's talking about. Let's you, go you, with it. You talked about like the Superman pose. It just yeah. yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 100%. It's yeah. psychologically powerful. You got to stand in your superhero pose. If you got to do it in your car before you knock on the door, do that. But there's like I'm sure there's scientific evidence. <laughs> Even if there isn't, I don't care. If it psychologically works for it's you, the then just hand do Hand on the it. hip and the finger. Uh, it's safe to say Karen that pose. you and your <laughs> husband probably don't play Monopoly. That's a Karen pose that you yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call the cops on you. That's right. Where's your manager? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I do want to ask, you know, so we talked about the uh, types that would be great at sales, but, you know, for the C's, because we do have some C's in our organization, I'm sure, that are listeners, um, that I, we probably for sure have C's that are listeners because they want to be the best in it. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah. They're listening. How can a C be intentional about um, being good at sales or improving themselves? Yes, the C's are a beautiful blend. First of all, all the blends are beautiful, and everybody's perfect, and you all get A pluses. You can't get life wrong. So, which one's your a, favorite? Right? Oh, oh dang. Yeah. <laughs> they're all my favorite. Everybody's good favorite. answer. So, for the C's, the gift that you bring naturally is your ability to contain so much information in your brain. You love facts, you love figures, you love the truth. Like at a baseline, you're like, you are correct. And correct is a C word, and it's your Austin. favorite word, <laughs> right? And so I want to acknowledge you, Austin. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. <laughs> oh, let me tell you how to acknowledge a C. Austin, I just want you to know that not only is what you do impressive, the amount of knowledge and the way you organize your files, it's not only good, it's perfect. Oh, man. Oh. Right? Hey, hey. Like, Somebody get this man some tissues. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's tearing Seriously, up. Seriously, Austin. Tearing up. Like, you know, like, that's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> but that is the truth. Because C's are, are quietly calculating. They have all the truth. And at some point, listen, they, they don't have all the truth. <laughs> so back to the analogy that we always use. Chris is a Keurig guy. And I measure my beans <laughs> and my water. And it is perfect. He pours it in a like, circular motion. Or, or cocktails. Face. Some people use jiggers, right? Yeah. And, and they pour it in the jigger and then they dump it in. Jigger's still not precise enough for me because sometimes you get it too high or it runs down the side. So hey, when I you start talking this way. way all of my cocktails. The on a more scale. I weigh them. The more you talk like that, the, <laughs> the, the more tired I get. <laughs> and then you taste the coffee or the cocktail. And then it is amazing. You're and right. That's amazing. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. You know, you got to give props fun. where props are due. And this man that's does right. things so beautifully mm. that that is a gift that we all need to, like, you know, woo, right. hands Chris, up. when you're on the road and your fuel tank is getting low <laughs> and you fill up gas, do you just, oh, the, the handle clicked. And so that's done. I put it back or you're. 
No, you you got to round off to an even oh, number, uh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yes. finish there. What do you think, Austin? That's terrible. <laughs> what do you think? But Chris is like, oh, actually, I just got hungry, so it's not even done. I'm putting the thing back up, going inside and getting it. <laughs> Austin, <laughs> Wait, I, there's my, my, gas, my gas filling habits are such that I will try to stop it at full speed right on like a like a four oh, zero a zero zero. Like I'm going 30, 39, and it's going, and I just try to let it go so that it, when it ends, it's on 50. Yeah. Even or forty. That's like one of them jackpot games. Oh yeah, yeah like, I, I'm trying to get there. And then if I don't get that, then I go to the next number until I get there. What really ticks me off is if it like starts coming out of the tank and I'm in between numbers. It just messes me up. Oh yep. my gosh, yep. that is funny. I don't know where that comes from in my personality because it's D and I, but I don't know. There must be a little C in there. That's the competitiveness. Yeah. That's I do it. have C. It's interesting because we in your in the assessment we have this environmental style and a basic style, and I'm hoping that you can talk about that because if, if, if agents that are listening to our, our pod, podcast today, they're like, "Well, I don't have the D in the I, so I'm not going to be good at this. I need to find a new career," and that would be entirely wrong. Would Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. There's a hundred percent. Anybody can do anything that they set their mind to. They just have to understand who they are and how they can contribute to the world. So if you want to sell insurance because you believe it, that's a thing that people need, I don't care what personality blend you are. It's, you need two things. You need enthusiasm and conviction. So those are the two, thing, two takeaways and an ability to understand how you relate to people. So your, your uh, basic style is how you might occur on a Saturday. When you wake up and there's no pressure and, and you have no place to go, that's how you just occur naturally. You're very comfortable in that space. And then your environmental graph is how you occur maybe at work or under pressure. So um, you may show up a little differently. So one of your quadrants might drop. So naturally, um, on, the, on the weekend, I'm very inspired. I have a lot of thoughts. If there's no pressure, like this is how my mind is working. It's fast. It's going. But when I hit pressure, if there's like an emergency situation, my I drops and my S comes into play and suddenly things become very focused for me. I create systems and mm. I move, you know, I checklist and I do things in that way, which is why for my wedding planning, um, it, they always run on time because like Austin, I, my, my meetings were three hours and I had to create a, you know, their, their timeline and it took three hours and I would go back and refine that and refine it until it was down to like one page for just for the, the couples. And they always ran smoothly because I did the work in advance. And all I had to do was show up and go tick, 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 because I knew that I had to be a different way on the day. So knowing who you are on a, on a regular day and knowing how you show up under pressure will inform how prepared you are going into any situation. So, you know, if you're high eye and you're like, ah, oh, this is so great, I can talk my way out of this, I have no idea who I just talked to. You don't have a pen to write down their name or you are going <laughs> to fail, right? Because yeah. you just haven't prepared enough. So that's all you have to do. Just be prepared and then um, it's like protect yourself from yourself. For, for people who do appointment setting, they're not going door to door, right? So they've lost some of their ability to be able to use, as Chris would say, this, this right? <laughs> Waving uh, at their faces. Or to see the, the physicality or their, their uh, physical response to, you know, you can see them peeking behind the door as you described earlier, or they're opening the door, yes, how can I help you? Now you're on the phone, right? You're just talking to somebody on the phone. It may be that you're not just setting an appointment on the phone. It actually might be that you're actually selling over the phone. You're actually, mm -hmm. you know, due to COVID-19, we, we all kind of learned how to, how to adapt. And there are people in our industry that work at call centers. They just do telephone sales. How does one apply the understanding of yourself and then uh, trying to quickly assess who you're dealing with in a non-face-to-face -face environment where you're having to listen for things? Have you ever had that question asked? Uh, yeah, so there are many, many factors, not just the face. The face is like the first indicator, but if you don't have mm -hmm. a face, you have a voice. And if the, somebody answers the phone like, hello, you know, <laughs> it's probably yeah. not like, hello. It's so, I mean, there's, you get immediate feedback from somebody, whether they're, whether you've interrupted them because they were doing something and they had to pick up the phone or whether you're a welcome interruption because maybe they're lonely or you know, maybe they, they don't, there's nobody around. They're isolated in COVID and they're, oh, someone's calling. I don't care if it's a telemarketer. <laughs> so <laughs> talk to anybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you can hear that in their tone. And um, 
You know, one of the things I always say, when, and I guess it's just like a practical tip, if you're calling somebody, don't just say, hi, how are you? Because I'm skeptical right away. I'm like, what do you mean, who, how am I? I'll tell you how I am after I know who it is. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's that's not a good opener. Thing. Yeah, it's definitely not a good opener. No, hi, how are you? Uh, who's I would say, hi, how much can you afford? <laughs> right, you may as well. It's like, how am I? Cause, because I'm a relational person, I'm not going to mm-hmm. tell you anything. I don't know who you are first. If you're a nice person, yeah. if you're a nice person, then maybe I'll tell you. So again, indicators like that. So you're looking for tone. You're listening for tone and their responsiveness to maybe your opening comments. And then you're trying to navigate that uh that way and if you're dealing with a factual person I mean, you just you got to get to the facts yes yeah don't don't ask them about their cat hey how's it going today and are you out in the gar- who is this and what do you want <laughs> so yeah, if they're yeah. interrupting you yeah yeah it's probably, probably a factual person <laughs> yes. a d or c right mm-hmm. yep. yes 100%. And if they're like, oh hey i'm doing great i just had the best morning ever just got back from a walk Oh, well, you know, you got a people person. Well, that sounds fantastic. The weather's beautiful today. I know. I took a walk as well. And, you know, life and health is important, you know. (laughs) know Now, if you're a C personality, you get one of those talkers on the phone. You've got to learn to adapt your personality to that, right? You've got to... You've got to step up. Is that where the energy comes in? Or how does a C adapt to an I personality? Like, how does that, that person who's cautious and wants to get it done is on the task side communicate yes. and connect with someone who's on the I, the outgoing people side, and they care about the, the bigger pictures or life or the story, and you're on the other side. I mean, it's just going to frustrate you if you try to communicate to them from your perspective. What, yes. do, what do those people have to do? Okay, so beyond all the amazing parts... I love how you that, just rubbed your hands together. You said, uh, okay, juicy, get ready to give us a good yeah. answer. <laughs> I know, for those listening, I was rubbing my hands together. So it, it, but beyond all the amazing parts that each of the quadrants have, each also have a blind spot. So um, these are direct. They're like, they can kind of run roughshod over people. So you got to watch that. Again, that's just about mirroring and experience will give you that. So you're not, you're not going to do that, right? Um, <laughs> Roger's like, that's not me. That's, that's not, not me. Well, you have enough eye to temper it, so it's good. The eyes have a lot of stories. Like right now, I'm really expressive, and I could tell you all the funny stories. And as a, someone who's conscious of it, I have to remember to offer sound bites that not everybody wants to listen to. This, the, the, we get caught in the bunny trail. So it's a matter of consciousness. What am I doing? And um, if I'm dealing with a high eye personality, to you have to you have to give them that they want to tell you stuff and that's their way of connecting and they're building rapport so if you celebrate all that they are they're going to love you and oh that's that was a great story so let me just get back to the paperwork so you're going to have to redirect people back to well that ties in beautifully with this place where you have to sign the (laughs) on the line right here (laughs) you know whatever you got to do um you got to bring them back um, S's are often really quiet. They're great listeners because they don't want to interrupt. Like you asked, like I don't want to interrupt because you know I want to be supportive. They'll listen, but they may be having reservations and they might not say anything. So your goal is then to ask questions, do a check-in. They'll show you something. Like if they're not, they'll give you something. Like mm, I see that you're you're a little concerned or you have some questions. How can I help you? So you, that's your job then to reach in and let them be expressive because they won't say much. Um, C's will argue with you. They are arguers because <laughs> they know the truth <laughs> and they're right. They are right. Never argue with a C because they probably researched it. Um, so, but they're also open to new information. So, you know, uh, if, if they see, well, I saw an ad and it says as low as this much on the monthly premiums. Well, that is true. If you die on the 4th of July between 3 and 5 p.m. and you don't have any dependents. So <laughs> that could be true. But here's more truth. That you know, and then you can fill them in with more facts and details. More truth. That's yeah. really like that. that. These are the people you want to say. Okay, this company's been around for this many years. They've yeah. paid out in this many policies. You know, here's the facts. Here's and, and just Austin. That was really good information, and we probably should put this on a podcast. Are you recording this? <laughs> uh, hold on, exactly. let me check. Okay, <laughs> it's in the right folder. Folder, even right. It so, is folders. Folders. So those are the Chris, things. Chris is cringing right now. You can't see him, but he's Mount. literally cringing. The crazy thing is, if we didn't have computers, like if we didn't have them, can you ma- imagine the mountain of folders this world would be covered in? <laughs> it would be nuts. 
I know. It's just Let's exhausting. No, because no, you got those personalities that, that clean out what they don't need <laughs> and, and just start burning them all. That's me. Chris, are yeah, I don't all think your apps so. on your phone... Are any oh, of them in I a can, folder? <laughs> Dude, you would cry if you okay. saw my phone. Well, and it's, in the, it's in my office. You saw mine because well, everything's in the folder. Well, Maddie's is in color coded. Are you kidding me? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Maddie, I know this is not going to surprise Sorry, you. Maddie. One of, one of the people you. that works with us is probably the most C in our home office. Does that surprise anyone? Hmm. No. No. Okay. no. More than you. I have to look at her chart again. I can't remember. She but is. That surprises yes. Me. Wow. Yes. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's but why Maddie and I get along color and why we were the two apps. that brought on the project management tool. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can we just that's talk about a... team for a second? The, sure. Yeah. The beauty of this is that there's um, the, the team and all its components. You guys are all like cogs in a beautiful wheel. And if everybody's given permission. I like the permission, word beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful thing. If everybody's given permission to really um, explore their cog, if you will, um, it just makes the machine bigger and better because, you know, yeah. people are like, gosh, I can't. Files, ask Austin. He knows. And yeah. there's like this relief because Austin's like, oh, thank God they gave me control because this thing's just going to fall apart if anybody else tries to take it on. <laughs> yeah. So he's happy because he's got the whole thing working. You just ask him. And that's a relief because he's managing that. And it's a relief for Chris and Roger and, and perhaps Zachary as well, yeah. where you don't have to manage that. Like that's mm -hmm. taken care of. And that gives you the freedom to do the things that you really are great at. So team matters. Hashtag you know, team matters. The interesting thing to that as far as team, and, and we do have teams. We have teams. This is beyond sales. I mean, we have teams who listen to our podcast. Mm. And maybe you're managing an organization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was just looking at this um, this chart that you have, by the way, the tools that you offer, I know we're going to get to yeah. that, are, oh my gosh, I mean, it's phenomenal stuff. But this environment and basic style, and mine is high, very high on basic style of S, and then high on I. And then there's no other colors. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You have, like, <laughs> you have like no C. Yeah, there's, there's low. But the interesting thing I've noticed in myself is I know C is important to other people and I engage it based how they feel. I would imagine C includes mathematics, right? <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that Chris has been doing is in the areas where you know he, he doesn't have much C, mm. is the team members that do have the high C, uh, well, he loves high C in general if he, if he goes to the <laughs> store. <laughs> but uh, he relies on us, and he mm -hmm. schedules meetings uh, or just sends us a message hey, can you help me do this? And so it's this, wherever you're lacking, find people that are lacking yeah. to, to compliment you. Uh, Roger and I, I mean, even in, even in uh, Jen's assessment of, of what my personality is, and if Roger looks on his, there's a part that says complementary personality types. And Roger and I are complementary. Mm -hmm. And we've worked together for eight years now. Yeah. No, it, it's because you find, okay, the areas where I'm less, where can I have people to help me out? And you built a great organization because all three of us are in your complementary type, <laughs> which is so funny. It's interesting because in that environmental style, like my basic style has some C in there. It's interesting you oh. say like I have to raise my C when I'm communicating at work because I know it's important to other people. <laughs> Look what happens to mine once I get it to work. <laughs> my S and my C. My S and C are non-existent. They're like little blips of color at the bottom. That's and a I'm three just, out of a hundred percent for those listening. I, yes, I'm at eighty-eight percent and seventy-nine percent, respectively, on the DI. Yeah, and when it comes to my and, work, and my, if my you look at process. mine, I'm a hundred S and ninety-three C. So like we wow. balance each other out. Mm. Yeah, these things are also important for marriage relationships for agents, uh, for people who are working in the sales industry. Um, because sometimes, you know, we're trying to figure out how to get our career off the ground or a bad month, you know, turned around or a bad week turned around. And you walk home and sometimes you just haven't done a proper assessment of how your spouse communicates or how they need to be communicated with mm -hmm. your kids. And sometimes they don't understand you and it can cause problems, especially if you're trying to pull yourself out of a rut and they're blowing up your phone saying, I need you to be home because we got to go, you know, and it's like, I, I'm, I'm just trying to get this thing turned around and get it back on the rails from where it was 
don't you understand what I'm doing for our family? <laughs> and yeah. the C personality who's at home saying, I need you to be home because we've got to do this and then the kids got to be here. And that it's like, how does that, I've got, we've got to make sure that, you know, I'm covering the bills and, you know, these other things. And I know you're going to bring that up at the end of the month. So I'm trying to get ahead of that <laughs> so you don't kill me with that then. But yeah, like, uh, and so if you don't have a proper understanding of your spouse, I mean, that's not a good recipe either. How do you bring this into your marriage and have those conversations about what you're trying to accomplish in your career and how you can ask for help from that person? Great questions. Because here's the thing, um, just like a team or a marriage, it doesn't matter. Opposites attract um, and they also repel. So the fact that, you know, you've been working, Austin, Roger and Austin have been working together for eight years, um, you complement each other, but you've got a relationship where you know that you can, you support each other on the areas that you're weaker on. In some, in people that are, are, are not willing to be a little more uh, reflective on their life or have some deeper insight, that could just be headbutting because you don't get each other and you don't understand how the other people think and you just don't see the world the same way. So, yeah, the ability to, you know, my, one of my kids, um, <laughs> talk about polar opposites. So he's, he's one way. He's an SC, you know, on a regular day. And if he goes, if he gets angry, he turns into a DI. He's like the Hulk. He's like, ah. <laughs> and it's completely opposite. So normally I would pick him up and cuddle him. But when he's angry, you just look out because, you know, there's going to be fists of fury. And so that's <laughs> not the time to go and, like, cuddle him because he needs a hot second to, to calm down. A hot so, second. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's the same thing with marriage relationships. So, you know, you have to set it up. Say, listen, th- this is how I'm operating. Um, if these are wired for being in control and, and like, these love to achieve and if they're not achieving it's really hard and so they keep looking to achieve 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 and that turns into a task and what happens is you push the people away and the people people which is probably who you're married to are like I'm like so lonely over here why aren't you talking to me and you're like I'm trying to achieve to give you this great life for our family I'm like, <laughs> but we just want you so that's like how many times have you had that conversation mm. So having that is just like, okay, we need to just, I can see, I can see that this is happening. How can I support you? And I'm going to tell you what I need. I'm going to need probably 15 minutes at the end of the day just to be with you or something. So there's that, mm-hmm. those expectations that we all have that if we don't say them, go unmet and that's when things blow up. So mm. um, Especially fact, during Corona season. I mean, right? oh everybody's been doing home projects and visiting Home Depot and Lowe's and... Uh, you know, yeah. you, you or, start to or, or really been home with each other for the yeah. longest period of time you've probably been with each other yeah. just together. <laughs> yeah. So the attraction suddenly turns into repulsion. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were like this. What do you mean? How long have you been married for? <laughs> I may but, or may not have said the phrase, you know, I thought we were so similar, but oh my, we are so different. <laughs> I may or may not have used the phrase. <laughs> yeah, may or may not. Yeah, 100%. And so it's, I think it just comes down to that open communication. You have to say what's going on. You have to say, you know, how I'm feeling. Use I statements. I learned that when I was 20 years old. I feel this way. It's not on you. Mm. This is how I feel. And here's what I would yep. like. Are you able, are we, can we do this, you know? Yep. Okay, great. This is how I feel. I need this. Okay, we could probably find a solution. So, yeah. It seems it's like the, the key to this, it's just so interesting uh, where you fall on this graph, but is empathy is yeah. understanding. And even, even for the people who are, who are DIs, like the eyes are, well, I, I'd say DCs probably the DCs, um, you know, you, you want to get somewhere, but you're probably going to get farther with other people. Right. And you yeah. have a truth. hundred percent. You're going to, um, you need people to validate that, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I don't understand C's at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Austin. <laughs> but understanding the needs, but having empathy, putting yourself in their shoes, and I'd, I'd imagine that is a little harder for some than it is for others. But it's everybody has to do it if you're going to go somewhere. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go, is it, oh, is it a, some proverb? I don't know, a Chinese proverb that says, "If you want to go far, go alone. Fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together." So, yeah, if you want to, something done fast, do it yourself, right? It's just going to get yeah. done. You don't have to wait on other people. But there's no longevity in that. And building a business, having a relationship, that's a long game. So, you know, you have to have people alongside you to 
make the machine work. So uh, whether it's a team or whether it's a spouse, um, and or even you know whether your client, like you, one of the things that I talk about right. is the um, how to date your client. And it's a bit of a, of a catchy you know joke phrase, Ooh. but it's, it's not wrong. We kind of we forget that our clients are worth wooing. That you don't just show up and and ask for the sale like you on a first date you would like hey I've never as a wedding planner I have never helped a couple get married on the first date so <laughs> you know it's the same thing with a client so there's a not there's even a, this Jenny not even right no. so there is a, a there's a number of steps along the way and that it comes with understanding who the other person is building that rapport and that trust and mm. then. Um, inviting someone. And just like on a first date, you don't just go in and talk all about yourself. I mean, you could, but you might not get a second date because the whole point is, tell me about you. Tell me about, do you like your mom? That's going to influence whether I like you, you know, six months down the road from now. <laughs> so <laughs> those kinds of questions are key. And it's the same thing when you're knocking on doors. When you get into someone's kitchen table, your your objective is to find out about them because in that basic interview or date, they will tell you everything you need to know in their words. And then you just reflect it back in their words. And they'll be like, ah, oh, they're a genius. Oh, my gosh, they get me. How did they know that? Well, you just said it, <laughs> but they don't remember. They, but you're speaking their language, and it feels like magic. And that's the beauty of empathy and rapport right there. Boom. Boom. No, just drop the mic there. <clears throat> just drop it. Guys, do you all have any other questions? Or, Jen, is there anything else that you wanted to share that we haven't discussed yet? Oh my gosh, I could talk about this for hours. And I, I <laughs> yeah. like, what, you know, I know we want to wrap it up, but I would love to hear stories about, you know, how long it took you and when was the final, like, when was the, the turning point for you in your, in your door knocking and your sales experience when you realized maybe listening or getting into other, another person's world was the key? Or, or is that the key? Or is there, what, tell me each of you, I would love to know, what is the defining, like, oh, this is a lesson I will always bring forward to every sales call I do I'd love to know I think for me it was it was a little different because I was more of that uh, you know that reserve side you know high I high S um, you know pretty decent mid average C so I'm actually in the same box as Austin so coming into this this opportunity for me uh, I wasn't very excited about door knocking I wasn't very excited about going seeing and meeting new people um, but you know I had every everything else there and and so for me, it was, you know, getting over that, taking that risk of just getting through it and, and the little butterflies and, and just and, and getting my reps in and, and being comfortable with that. Also sitting in people's homes. Um, but I also felt like I was really good at listening because I didn't want to talk very much. So, right. <laughs> you know, so I think that was a huge help of once I got into the homes to be able to listen and figure out what they want. And I'm such a supportive is I wanted to give them what they needed or, or what, they, what they wanted. And it was kind of a natural um, to be able to get to the close. But one of the biggest thing, hurdles in that was sometimes getting in the door uh, initially, just getting over my fears of that. Um, and then being in the home, um, you know, dealing with the different personalities, like some of the D's, um, being able to just step up and be the correct and have that argument with them in a nice way um, and, and kind of going through that. Because like for me, I studied and learned all the facts about yeah. all the carriers, all the details. So I was prepared for those arguments and it was just about having them at that point. Mm -hmm. So where I had to kind of bring a couple of my levels up to make this a great opportunity, I think uh, other people probably have to, you know, go in different directions or come down. Awesome. So you're well prepared, um, and you have to trust that you're prepared because you've got all the da data and facts right beside you, and now it's just the people, and that's like the magic for you right there. Right. Nice. Okay, who's next? I love this. I would this. say this um, fun. In my, my background, I was a youth pastor uh, for years. Um, so having a an understanding of, of people and listening was a big part of my makeup. So I think uh, learning the different personalities was important because I thought uh, just being able to connect personality wise was either they liked me or they didn't, but that wasn't the case. You know, it was what they needed and understanding the needs of each person uh, and how you were delivering that to them. 
uh, became a big part of it for me. But yeah, I, I mean, we've had this conversation where I said, Roger, I just, I think I've gotten by my personality so far uh, with being able to connect with people, but I was only connecting probably with half the people, or I don't know if it's split down 50, 50, but you know, um, you can get by with a little charm, with a little listening, with a little engagement, a couple laughs, but knowing, oh, okay, there are some folks who need information. Uh, they need it quickly, or you have to step up to a strong personality and things like that. Like that was probably a year and a half, two years into this where I started to really understand some of those pieces, but yeah, it's been a journey. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. Okay. That's really good. So basically it's just the opposite of, of you, I'll say your weakest quadrant is your zone of, of strength. If you can bolster that muscle, that is where the power lives. Okay. Mm. Wow. All right, Roger, that's I know where the power lives. Mm. Right. That was a strong Honestly. statement. I'm looking at the S and C. Well, I'm that should be on a podcast. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, so one thing Roger always says is, like, at our conference, I get into this zone, and he's like, hey, Austin, where's this? And I'm like, direct D, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. and yeah, he's he has like, that highest output when there's, like, a massive deadline and there's a bunch of people waiting. <laughs> he can perform at superhuman levels. I mean, he you just got to look at him, and he's in his Superman pose. Like, I mean, he's just standing there in the corner. The cape is flapping, yeah, right? Yeah, it's flapping. Yeah. There's no move. wind. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just it's, in the back. Just <laughs> he yeah. is task because he's task and service. He doesn't want to let anybody down because mm -hmm. he gets how much this is, and he's got he's got all the good. So he's like, and he wants man, it to be right. right. He yes. wants it to be good. He wants it to be right, and he doesn't want any people interrupting his mojo because he knows what's coming next. So to ask, can I help? Um, I'll think about that in a minute once I finish these other things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he's pointless. Like, is there anything 100%. I can do? Or did you eat? No. Well, let me get someone to get you food because I'm not going to go get it. One of, my, <laughs> and, one of mine and Austin's common main motivations is commitment to quality. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, yeah. If you bring that and, and you bolster the, the muscle in the quadrant that you're lowest in, like unstoppable. And, and that's the whole mm. thing. For anybody who's listening who is concerned that they can't do this, you just have to know who you are and know what you're not and practice in those areas. That's just the mm -hmm. muscle you have to build. Yeah. And then literally unstoppable. There's nothing that you can't do. It's just it's just in your mind, really. Yeah. Before I knew any of this, um, for me, when I got into sales and I started getting really good at it, I liked selling the people that were like me the mm -hmm. most. So when I ran yeah. into a, an yeah. ID personality, oh, yeah. <laughs> We were closing. It was going. Yeah. It was. It was going to happen because I got bing. them. I understood them, so I understood their language, and I could speak their words that made them feel powerful or made them feel decisive to go ahead. Because if they were uh, people, uh, if they like to be influencing and interesting and outgoing, and they want to be liked, uh, man, I just uh, you just elevate those people and tell them this yeah. is what this is going to do for you. You, I mean, you're making the best decision. I love this decision about what you're doing. This is going to be so great for your family. Everyone's going to love this. Oh you're going to be the face of this industry. <laughs> and people will be like, oh, give, yeah, yeah, where did I sign? Whatever you're, whatever you're throwing out, I'm taking it. What just, yeah. what just happened? I, I feel know. like, and, and, and when I would run into a D personality and they just wanted to get it done, I'm like, you're probably tired of all the people walking in here and trying to sell you fluff. You just want to know what's going to get the job done that's going to increase your numbers so they go northeast and you can stop dilly dallying around with all these other people that bring no results i'm going to bring you results this is the best program we have let's get it done and let's get it done now here sign and they would go i like you okay yeah. tell me again the results these are results okay i'm holding you to that and i'm holding you to your commitment all right i like you and we, we walk out of the room you know chest bumping each other it was oh great God. it was great my struggle was when I got into that room and I was with a C. So I need to analyze the numbers. <laughs> it's going to make you feel great. I don't care about that. What's you know, the percentage uh, this has been paid like out this, over the last 12 years? This, this is, this is <laughs> like, we just need to make a decision. You've been thinking about this for too many oh, years. Geez. You need to decide. Uh, I, I need to talk. I need to talk to my wife. We're going to call you back. We just don't make decisions. 
it would just be it would be this big area of unknown, and I would feel myself getting sucked into this vortex <laughs> of nothingness. It was just like <laughs> sucking the life out of me because my energy came from understanding who they were, and then I would get into this conversation with people who just wanted to look at the numbers again. I'm like, they're not that important, and to them, they were everything. Uh, and they needed to understand so they could make the decision that was the best decision or so that they were correct. I wasn't speaking their language. And then when I got with the S's, I would steamroll over them. And they would not want to talk to me. Oh. And so yeah. they'd be like, "This everything is great. We're going to move forward. Um, so what I need to do, though, is I need to make sure I take care of this so that when I get back with you, I can have that done. And then I would never see them again because they wouldn't show up. And they yeah. didn't want to talk to me because they didn't want to let me down and have a confrontation with me on the phone. So they just wouldn't answer. And yes. it was all over. And so I didn't hide. know how. Yeah, they would hide. And I didn't know how to deal with them. But once I started understanding that it's okay for me to communicate from their perspective and stop just bringing all of me all the time, but bring more of them into the conversation and help them meet them. As we say at our organization, we meet agents where they're at. And we help them get where they want to go. And for every person, that's different. And so you're listening today. I would challenge you, if you're building an agency, help meet agents where they're at. Help them get where they want to go. It doesn't, they don't always have to look like you. These people in this room here, they yeah. don't look like me physically or uh, you know, with their personality profile. Um, and if you're dealing with clients, like adapt to their needs and help them help understand what the real need is, that true rapport, right? That true rapport that you talked about and, uh, and help them achieve that in a way that makes sense to them. And, and you truly become an advisor. You're not just a closer at that point. And there's too many people flexing on the internet and on Facebook and posting all the numbers they write and what their organization did. And it's just a big flex contest. Um, you don't have to be that person. You can be extremely successful in who you are uh, if you understand yourself, you communicate well to others, and you help meet people where they're at and help them get where they want to go. I mean, in life, I need to be a better husband. I need to apply this this weekend, things I've learned today yeah. to my family. <laughs> I do. I'm, like, I'm thinking about things that I can do this weekend that will make my family dynamic better. And I think if we all took something away like that from this podcast, it's going to help your life. It's going to help your business. It's going to certainly help you understand who you are and what you can bring to the world. So I, I I don't know if we're wrapping, but I just want to say thank you for for yeah, being here yeah, and no and for pi- providing these tools and resources and for Austin and Chris on on setting it up. I appreciate it so much. It's so much value here. I think we just solved the world's problems. We did. <laughs> I don't think there. Are, we need to have another podcast ever. Honestly, that was good. <laughs> Well, no, you go. You guys do. But <laughs> uh, honestly, well, thank you amazing. so much, uh, Jennifer. Uh, if you have an organization, if you're a manager. Jennifer does a great presentation. If, yes. if you have any meetings coming up with your team, definitely reach out to her, invite her. It was super engaging, very fun. There's music involved. There's movement. There were I puppets. Mean, there weren't. That, uh, no. that was somebody else. Uh, I'm sorry. No, there weren't there were no puppets. A thousand apologies. <laughs> but maybe there should be. Oh, I'll take it under saying. advisement. <laughs> Oh, you guys. But definitely Thank you for reach having out, me. Invite her. Um, or if you're just an individual and you want to learn more about what your personality is, uh, she does assessments and she also does this great one on one coaching. It was a huge uh, hit at our conference where our agents, you know, basically walked up to the table and talked to the doc. I mean, yeah, it was so like, the, the doctor's in. The doctor's, the doctor's in. in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, she's, she's, offering that. Um, and she also has a great newsletter. So there's a lot of ways that you can connect with her. We'll put all of her information in the show notes. Uh, Jennifer, do you want to share maybe a website or email that they can reach out to you? Sure. Jennifer at jennifermaxwell.ca. I'm in Canada, so don't forget the .ca. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy. All the stuff's on the website. You can you can do an assessment on your own. It's as, as little as 13 bucks. So you don't. it's like an instant download. It's fast. Um, you can hop in my newsletter. It's free. It's called Take 10 with Jen. And uh, that's on the home page. And you can pop your email in there. And, I look forward uh, to reading yeah. it every Sunday morning. Yeah. I know it comes Do out you? on Sundays because you're like one of the only people that sends me email on Sunday. And so I read it. Uh, like it's one yes. of the first things that I read on Sunday mornings, believe it or not. Awesome. Wow. I'm so honored. Thank you. Yeah. I did it that intentionally because people are bombarded Monday to Friday. Yeah. So 
Definitely. If you are a minutes. manager, if you have a small team, a big team, an agency, you know, or if you have an executive team or running a business, I mean, check it out. Because, In her office, yeah. You know, the doctor, she can she can the put your doctor. personalities together and show you all how to communicate better to get projects done or for you to manage uh, your team because you may have a certain style, um, but you need to adapt just like you adapt to your clients to each agent on your team so you can be able to uh, increase, you know, their productivity and help them get where they want to go wherever that is. Um, so it's definitely, definitely useful. Jen, I also know that during this, uh, obviously, this uh, a lot of home quarantine and staying healthy at home type of mindset through this uh, the the pandemic, uh, this COVID crisis around the world. Do you have virtual offerings for people if they were to reach out? Is that something that's available to them? I mean, they don't have to wait till they set up their conference with their hundred or two hundred people for you to come in. Um, I'm sure you have virtual offerings available. Uh, I is do. that something that they yeah. can check out with you? Absolutely. I mean, everyone's doing their conferences online. They're a little a little less time intensive now for obvious reasons, but uh, that's available. And one to one is available. You know, Zoom and, and online communication is is up and alive today, as we know. So uh, we can meet anywhere in the world in any time zone. That's awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. We hope I love to you guys. Uh, maybe bring you back on uh, and, and learn more about um, ourselves and our clients. So, thanks so much. Well, thanks again for joining us for this episode. Let us know how is this impacting your business? Are you able to type your clients? Just send us a message on social media or let us know in the comments on the show notes page. You can visit that page at liapodcast.org slash EP26. That's liapodcast.org slash EP26. And as always, thanks so much for listening to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening, rate us five stars, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. The Life Insurance Academy podcast is hosted, edited, and mixed by me, Austin Lopes Overo. This episode was produced by Chris Ball and me. Our theme song is by Flashing Lights. We'll see you on another episode. Until then, stay safe and go be a difference maker.